In this video, we're going to learn how to initialize an array of strings with user input in C. So in C, we don't technically have arrays of strings, but we do have 2D car arrays, and we can store a string in each row of the 2D car array. And that's what we'll do in this video. Now we'll define preprocessor constants for the number of rows and columns in our 2D array. So we'll have here number define total strings and we'll set total strings to five. And this is going to be the number of rows in our 2D array and the number of strings we're going to store. Then we'll have number define string buffer length and we'll set this to let's say 10 initially. And this will be the number of columns in the 2D array, which is also the length of each row in the 2D array. Next, we can declare the 2D array. So we'll have car strings with total strings amount of rows and string buffer length amount of columns. As part of our solution, we'll need to determine the length of each string that is entered. So we'll include the string.h library because this library includes a function called strlen that's going to return the length of a string. Next, we need to prompt the user total strings number of times for each string, and we'll store each string into the 2D car array. So next, we'll have a loop. We'll have for int i is equal to zero, and i is going to be our counter variable, and we'll have i is less than total strings for the condition, and i++. So because i is going to go from zero up until total strings, incrementing by one with each loop iteration, this loop is going to run total strings number of times. And that's exactly what we want. Now i is gonna go from zero to one to two, all the way up to total strings minus one. And that's exactly the indexes of the rows in this 2D array. So we can also use i to access each row in that 2D array to store a string there. So next, inside the loop body, we'll prompt the user to enter each string. So we'll have printf, enter string, and then percent %d to output an int. And we'll output the string number one, two, three, four, and so on. Then we'll have colon and space, and we'll output i plus one to output string one, string two, string three, and so on. Now we want the user to be able to enter in strings that could include spaces. The scanf function is not very good for this. If we had scanf and then percent %s to store a string, percent %s is actually going to stop recording the string when the first space occurs in the string. Whereas the fgets function is going to stop recording the string when the user hits enter. So here we'll have fgets strings at the index i and then string buffer length, and then stdin. So altogether, what this means is that the string is going to be stored into row i of our 2D array. String buffer length is the length of that row. And fgets is going to make sure the string, including the null terminator that's stored there, does not exceed that length. And stdin means the string is going to be read from standard input, which as a practical matter is going to be the terminal or the shell, but standard input can be redirected such that it comes from somewhere else, like a file. Now, if the user enters in something like ABC and then hits enter, fgets is going to insert a new line at the end of the string. And the new line character is effectively the user hitting enter. It's not really part of the string that we want to keep. After the new line character, we'll have the null terminator character that ends the string. What we'll do is pull forward the null terminator character by one character to remove the new line character, like this. So each character in the string is going to be stored at an index. So A here is at index zero, B is at index one, C is at index two, the new line is going to be at index three, and the null terminator is going to be at index four. Now the length of the string, as given by the string length function in this case, is going to be four, because the string length function does not include the null terminator character in the length of the string. So what we can do is at the index length 
minus one, set the null terminator. So we can have null terminator here. That will end the string here instead of here. Let's do that. First, we'll declare an int variable called length and we'll initialize it to the return value of str len when it's called with a string at the row i in our 2D array. Then we'll set at that row, at the index, length minus one, the null terminator character. And that's going to end that string one character earlier and shave off the new line character. Now we do have one other tricky thing to account for. fgets is going to store a string up to a maximum size of the string buffer length. And that does include the null terminator character. So for example, if the user enters in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero, this here is 10 characters long. So altogether, the complete input is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, and the new line character for when the user hits enter. But because string buffer length is 10, f gets is only going to store this string, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then the null terminator character is going to be stored. And that's it. So in this situation, our string does not actually end with a new line character, and we would not want to insert the null terminator character at the index length minus one. So we'll check for that. We'll have here, if the string stored at the row i does have a new line character at the index length minus one, then we're going to put a null terminator character there instead. So we'll have this. Now there's one other problem we need to solve. After the user does hit enter and this string is stored into the row of the 2D array, these two characters here will still be on the standard input buffer. We need to take these characters off the standard input buffer, otherwise we're going to have a problem. We call this clearing the input buffer and we do need to do it because if we don't, what's going to happen is the next time f gets is called during the next loop iteration, these characters will still be on the input buffer and f gets is going to read those characters, which means f gets is not even going to pause to allow the user to enter a string. It's going to see this string and store it into the next row of the 2D array. So what we'll do is pull these characters off the standard input buffer. So here we'll have an else case. We'll say else, if the new line character is not in the string, that means we've exceeded the length of the row. And in that case, we're going to read characters off the input buffer until a new line is encountered. So we'll have here int c to store a character and we'll have while c is equal to get car does not equal the new line character we're going to continue. So get car technically returns an int. That's why we declared C as an int. And what we're doing here is calling get car continually and storing the result into C. Get car is going to read the next character from the standard input buffer. And this expression here is going to evaluate to whatever was assigned to C. So if the character red is zero, this expression is going to evaluate to zero. And we're going to keep on pulling off the next character until we pull off the new line character. Once we do pull off the new line character, we'll know that we've cleared the standard input buffer. Now it's possible that standard input has been redirected to a file. So we'll have here and C does not equal EOF because it's possible that EOF could be returned from get car if the end of the file has been encountered. So next we can output the strings. Down here, after this loop, we'll have another loop to output the strings. So we'll have here for int i is equal to zero, i is less than total strings, 
and I++, and we'll output each string. We'll have printf string percent %d to output the string number, and colon, and then percent %s to output the string, backslash n for a new line, and then I plus one for the string number, and strings at the index i to output the string. We could save, compile, and run our program to test it out. And we could put here ABC, and then we'll put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. And then we'll try one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then we'll try one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, and A, B, C, D, E, F. And then just one, two, three, four. And we can see that it does work as designed because F gets never skipped pausing for input. So we must have cleared the input buffer successfully. Also notice that this case here was stored exactly as we described. Now here, we're only allowing up to 10 characters per string, including the null terminator character. We could increase the size of our string buffer length. So instead of 10, we could have 100 or even 1,000 or something much more. We could try this out. If we save, compile, and run the program, we could now enter in very large strings and it's going to be okay. So we'll just try this. And we can see that we can now store very large strings as well. So we could always increase the number of strings stored or the buffer size for each string as well. So this is how we can initialize an array of strings with user input in C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.